this is the part of the show where we put a fund in the spotlight. And this week, we're reviewing the Access Inflation Plus 3 to 5% Strategy Fund. So, Kirby, I know that I have been ragging you quite for quite some time to actually put one of your funds in the spotlight so we can actually see how well you're doing. So, go ahead. Tell look, us what look, it's about. Look, the person that's been looking forward the most to this is Roland. Because now, finally, Roland can actually crit me, <laughs> which is fantastic. How many funds do you actually have, Kirby? Well, I mean, these are actually called these are strategies in, yeah. uh, in, in, in the Access world. And there's probably five or six of these strategies. Uh, is this is the best performing strategy. No, 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 no. This is mid. This is <laughs> middle of the range. So I've chosen okay. something that targets inflation plus three to five, but I could have chosen something that targets a much higher return or lower return. This is somewhere okay. in the middle. Uh, the fund size there about four and a half billion formation date in uh, July two thousand and three. The managers there, obviously being the access research and investment management team, uh, of which I of which I form part of uh, part of, and it's obviously a team approach as far as the management of the sh of the strategy is concerned. It's on a, on obviously on a fund of funds or multi manager basis. So there's managers that we've appointed within the realms. Of this, of of uh, of of the strategy, uh, and then obviously the asset allocation is managed by the team. Give you some numbers here: 12 months, 10.3. That's net of fees versus a, 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 a target, which is CPI plus four of 9.2. Two years, 12.1. One versus 8.8. .8. Three years, slightly below targets: 8.8 .8 versus 9.6. And five years, 9.8 versus 10.8. .8. Let me show you some more numbers over here. You would have become accustomed to us looking at returns from uh, from from this perspective. It shows. The, the strategy's re return relative to its target over here. If you see a return such as this, it's outperformance relative to the target, and that's obviously underperformance relative to the target, and that you see obviously you know, correcting itself on the other side, and the line that you're seeing over here is CPI plus four over time. You can see there's outperformance of the fund over 2007, but as we hit the crisis and we see inflation aggressively start increasing over, over on this period over here, you see the strategy obviously underperforming. That's on the back end of us obviously pulling back as far as the equity exposure was concerned. In uh, very late 2008 and 2009, the equity exposure obviously starts increasing again, and uh, you see as inflation starts cooling down, you see the outperformance again for, this, for the strategy long term. It beats its target. Um, and Elenia, it's over to you. Okay, thanks for that, Kirby. Okay, so Roland, you can tell us your views. Well, I'd, I'd, um, I'd like to ask Kirby how, um, this is one of the sort of concerns I have over the next two years about absolute funds in general, um, that try and target a CPI plus three, five kind of range. Um, given where asset classes are moving, given the fact that uh, a lot of people are expecting inflation to go up and interest rates to go up. You tend to find that equities and bonds don't do that well. Inflation-linked bonds is a, is a different issue. But equities and bonds probably are not going to do that well if inflation goes up and interest rates go up. Where do people, if they've got those three asset classes, going to get the CPI plus X return from? Um, is that something that, that worries your clients or that worries you in terms of, of actually delivering on this mandate? And uh, may I interject there, also just looking at the inflation scenario when it comes to equities, we know that it is a very good hedge against inflation, but we also know that in an inflationary environment, uh, that with, uh, with high growth then means equities do well. Isn't that Well, inflation right? is, is, is a good hedge in the long run, but mm -hmm. over two, three years, it isn't necessarily a good hedge especially when there's a sharp turnaround in inflation. And uh, it's, it, it's that risk that uh, you have in the short run with equity. So they do quite badly when inflation suddenly turns around, but in the long run, they are a good inflation. I mean, I think, I think Roland, you make, you make interesting points. I think the first thing is that if you sit in an inflation environment that aggressively increases, um, and there is certainly, I mean, if you talk to the Federal Reserve, they're actually hoping for inflation, and more inflation than what they're getting out of the cycle at the moment. Then, obviously, the one thing that you don't want to be earning is, uh, is potentially bonds, because you've got yields moving up and you've got price moving down. That's exasperated today by the fact that you potentially could have a default happening, okay, because you're sitting with massively debt laden a Western world. So, you know, bonds is not an asset class that we would actually, would, 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 that we would welcome. As a matter of fact, what we've done with a lot of the bond mandates is that we've made them into what we call fixed income mandates. So fixed income mandates are literally, you can own bonds by cash. The manager can own both of those asset classes. So if they want to go short in cash, they can go beyond the one year bonds and they can actually go and sit in cash if they want to do that. So that's the first safeguard mechanism. The second safeguard mechanism is if you can't get the growth, what are you going to do? Most guys are buying commodities right now, gold and the likes, and gold's shooting past $1,850. I'd probably say that you're increasing your risk by buying gold. So therefore, the only thing that you could potentially be doing is you should be looking at potentially either buying protected equities or potentially just buying naked equities. Naked equities, even though there's huge volatility, there continues to be good news stories coming out for equities. The question is, though, at what, did, what is what is the commensurable amount and allocation as far as equities that you want to own relative to the target, and how much do you want to keep back so that if there is volatility and it gives you a buying opportunity, you 
can actually get involved in the market. And I mean, that's a debate that we have on a daily basis. Okay, so Roland, are you happy with that answer? Um, We'll, we'll have to wait and see because uh, I, think, I think it's going to be pretty tough to, for anybody in this category, and never mind access, to deliver an inflation plus 5%. Let me, say, I mean, let, me say to Ryan, I mean, let me say to Ryan, I concur. I agree. The ab absolute space is going to be tough going forward. It is. It's not, it's not, a, it's not necessarily just going to be an easy space to, uh, to, how to do be you, in. How do you manage the, the, the fact that the managers that you are allocating to in this fund um, sort of counteract each other in the sense that one manager might go overweight equities, the other one goes underweight equities. You obviously leave it up to them, but the, the point is, do you do any kind of overlays or risk kind of monitoring? Because you, 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 mm. if, all equity, uh, sorry, if all the managers go into equity heavily, uh, do you want that necessarily? Remember that most do you care about that? The mandates that we hand out here to managers are not balanced mandates or what we call flexible mandates. Okay. There are one or two of them, but they're very, very small. Most of them are what we call specialist mandates. So it's okay. equity only or so bond you, only. So you control the allocation? Correct. So the actual allocation is then controlled by, 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 the, by the access research and investment management okay. team, which, is then, you know, which then gives you more kind of, more kind of control on what, what it is that you're trying to achieve. I'd like to take a step back and just look at the overall picture that is playing up because it is very dire when you look at all the volatility and the worries about European uh, uh, the debt crisis there ongoing GDP out of Germany really disappointing soft patches of GD of, of numbers and economic data mm. out of US as well mm. how does this affect your thinking when it comes to asset allocation do you start looking at reweighting things what do you do well I mean I think the first thing is that we look at the allocation towards um, firstly towards towards the different asset classes based upon evaluation methodology so firstly we understand the value that we can potentially be getting in the different asset classes. Uh, Roland, Ron and I have at nauseum spoken and discussed you know, the value effect, for instance, in markets. We, that's something that we're trying to understand, and we're trying to understand which of the asset classes actually have that inherent. Mm -hmm. Once you understand that, then the question is, how do you allocate capital to that? Is it something that you yeah. want to allocate immediately? Is it something that you want to allocate over time? That's an ongoing debate that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, you know, going into, this, going into the cycle that you've got now, if you're sitting overweight equity, say, for instance, where you've got no spare capital that you can spend anywhere, especially seeing that there's so much yeah. volatility and it can potentially have a buying okay. opportunity. Okay, so, so Roland, buying opportunity, would you say, or do you think that it's time to get scared and run? Well, I've been quite bearish for quite a few weeks on the show, and I think we're still seeing a lot uh, more downside coming. Um, everyone's talking about a double dip uh, potential being uh, higher now than, than before. I mean, in the, this month, August, we've seen the market down 6% already. Yeah. Um, that's going to be tough to try and beat inflation with that kind of driver in your phone. Okay, we have to leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. Much thank appreciated. You. That's all the time we have for, for this episode of WealthQuest. We'll be back next week, Monday, at the same time at 8.30 p.m. Central African time, right here on CNBC Africa. Until then, from me, Eleni Jokos, and my two insightful guests, it's goodbye.